Welcome to Tamara Tattletales. I'm Tamara and I spill the tea on your favorite reality stars. Married at First Sight Season 13 Decision Day. We finally made it through this season. Wow, remember how boring the first few episodes were? Even though we pretty much knew the outcomes of these couples, Decision Day still had a little bit of suspense. More yeses than I anticipated. Let's start off with the ultimate train wreck of Zakayla. I guarantee you that we were not shown the full picture or even an accurate picture of their relationship. One of the producers of the show shared this photo and captioned it, y'all will never understand what they went through. So many stories that won't be told. This probably explains why they look so crazy on decision day, gushing all over each other. The moment I saw that, I was like, wait a minute, where did all this come from? I don't blame Zach and Michaela. This is a case of bad storytelling on the part of the producers. When Zach said Michaela was the most amazing woman he's ever known outside of his mother, I was instantly upset at the editing. They knew what decision day answers were while they were editing the season. Any good story has a beginning, middle, and end. In this case, the ending did not coincide with the beginning and middle. It's completely disjointed because they left out important pieces of the story, which would have made the ending make a lot more sense. But with all that said, for Zach's answer to be no, he did way too much on decision day. First of all, the way he pulled that letter out when Dr. Pepper asked him to share some good memories about the marriage was crazy awkward and uncomfortable. Him writing Michaela a love letter, professing his love to her, telling her how extraordinary she was. Michaela, you are so incredible that I don't want to be your husband. Kick rocks, but stay with me. Well, to this moment, I still don't understand his logic of wanting to get a divorce, yet still work on the marriage after decision day. I must say that Zach did forecast this answer early on. Not only did he say multiple times throughout the season that he would say no on decision day if he had to decide on that particular day, but at the couple's retreat, he shared the stupid idea with Michaela both on and off camera, which caused this reaction from Michaela. Plus, he brought it up again when they were all hanging out together, playing pool and chatting. So this was no news flash to Michaela. One of the million things I don't understand about Zach's idea is the ultimate goal. Is the goal to get a divorce and work on the relationship with the hope of getting remarried? Usually you don't divorce a person in order to work on the marriage. Ultimately, I believe that Zach has maturing to do and needs to work on his communication skills. Plus, he didn't really know how to handle someone with a hot temper like Michaela's, but I'm not really faulting him for that because no one should have to learn how to handle a hot temper like Michaela's. I was surprised that Miss Michaela said yes to staying married. I often have a difficult time believing her version of things. She's proven that her recount of events tend to have a slant in her favor. And we saw that after the couple's retreat when she spoke to both Dr. Pepper and her sister. So how about this plot twist? Someone went on social media after Decision Day aired and posted this assessment of Zach and Michaela. Zach and Michaela, I think they had previously discussed what they would do on decision day and Michaela jumped ship last minute so she could play victim. She left Zach to look like the bad guy for sympathy since she knew she likely was going to look crazy. He was kind of shocked by her yes and felt a little weirded out because he started getting questioned left and right and turned into a blabbering idiot without anything to say. He also seemed frustrated at the dinner post decision day. I think this confirmed that he was glad he was done. So Zach hops on and replies, wow, I didn't think anyone would get this. Impressive. Now the question is, did she change her answer before we sat down with the experts or did she read a letter she wrote, give her answer at the end of it, got questioned by the experts who then asked the question again and then changed her answer knowing under no circumstances would I change my answer. So if she said yes, I would now look like the bad guy and she would be the victim yet again. Luckily, I will answer this question in about two weeks and show you the exact letter she read on decision day. So Zach alleges that Michaela's original answer was no, but after a little manipulation from the judges and maybe some gameplay on Michaela's part, she changed her answer to yes. I tend to believe this because I thought it was strange that they asked Zach if he wanted to stay married or divorced 
twice as if they were hoping to sway him to say yes it does sound like they plan ahead of time to read each other a love letter then say no but thanks to some coaxing by the experts she flipped the script this is just so messy Mirla and Gil. Now it took me a minute to get past the fact that Mirla allowed a six-year-old to do her makeup. Girl looked like she just went eight rounds with Mike Tyson. Mirla is brutally honest. I'm not mad at the honest part, but the brutal is where I take issue with her. Calling the wedding ring ugly? First, let's be clear that Gil didn't pick out the ring, so it wasn't a dig against him. However, the ring was a gift and it signified their union. There are so many more gracious ways to say she wasn't fond of the ring and decided to replace it. It's ugly. Come on now, do better. Then she called her free wedding terrible. After she explained it further, it sounds like she didn't enjoy the experience of being around people she didn't know. Again, she could have worded that better, but this moment right here? We really thought with the amount of commitment and love that you're both capable of giving, happiness, family, values, shared life, over the discrepancy in pay, were we wrong? I think you were wrong. If I could high five Mirla right then, I would have. Mirla is saying what so many of us have been proclaiming for several seasons. Stop pairing people who are complete opposites on a fundamental level and expect the desire to be married to resolve those issues. Take off those rose colored glasses, Dr. Viviana, and see that you set them up to fail, but they made it this far in spite of this being a mismatch. Gil was so happy to share that they had sex. The fact that they had sex wasn't a surprise to me because Mirla said that kissing was like the same level of having sex in her mind. And as for their lifestyle differences, it was nice to hear Gil say that he would be happy with hundreds of thousands of dollars because his dream of having eight kids was not lining up with his attitude of not caring about money. If he's gonna feed eight kids, he needs to get his money hustle on or marry a woman who has a lot of money. Their yeses to staying together and the reasons why were nice to hear. Unfortunately, based on the previews of the reunion episode where Gil is boohooing like Zach, it looks like their breakup broke his heart. Bao and Johnny. I was surprised to hear Bao say that there were more highs than lows in their marriage. They both seemed so miserable for a long time. I was happy that Bao didn't allow Johnny's yes to sway her. She stood her ground by saying no to Johnny. She was declaring that she deserves to be treated better. That's what I'm talking about, Bao. Pastor Cal dropped that gem of an observation that they both brought the issues they had while dating into this marriage, which was great insight, Pastor Cal. Wish you would have shared that nugget uh, six or seven weeks ago. And it would have been nice if you would have coached them to not set themselves up for failure by repeating old mistakes. Johnny stayed consistent and was a hot mess, patting himself on the back for not running away from this relationship. Mm. First off, he did run away to his apartment for a night or two. He seems to confuse being physically present with being mentally present. Who cares if you show up if you're mentally checked out? and Johnny must have forgotten that he has a temper on him. He claims that he's never yelled at her. Maybe not at her, but I distinctly remember him yelling. Be okay. He asked me to put 100% in. I remember him fussing at her while saying mean things about her laugh, her effort, wishing he was matched with anyone but her, discounting the little things she did for him on a regular basis, and demanding that she met his needs while not even asking what hers were. I was surprised that he said yes to staying together. It really felt like he was disgusted by Bao most of the season. And then at the end, he asked the question, was the marriage really that bad? No, the marriage wasn't that bad. You were. Brett and Ryan. This this is another mismatch that was doomed before it got started. First of all, Ryan is dull. Three weeks went by before we even saw him smile. Their political differences alone should have disqualified this couple. Let's be real. Being on opposite sides of the fence in this political climate, that in and of itself could be a recipe for disaster. I realize there are many couples who make it work, but when you only have eight weeks, let's give these couples a head start, like a fighting chance. During this episode where each of them had to meet with an expert, Ryan said he was low-key scared of Dr. Pepper. I don't think it was a coincidence that she was the one who asked Ryan about downloading the dating app. 
He really didn't give a reason for doing so. All he did was apologize for getting caught. According to Brett, Ryan was sitting around waiting for feelings to develop, but didn't put effort into the marriage that would allow feelings to grow. But she was really feeling him early on and said she was in like with him. While they were playing Jenga, she gave him like a dozen notes she wrote expressing how great she thought he was. So he must have been doing something right for a minute at least. Their mutual nose to staying married came as no surprise. However, I didn't appreciate Dr. Pepper's little parting gift message. She said, I know you didn't come here to fail. Ending a marriage can feel like a failure. No, Dr. Pepper, they didn't fail. You failed them. How dare you push off this bad match on them? Is this really how you see this situation? It's their fault? Girl, bye. Rachel and Jose. Rachel seems like a really nice young lady. I think if anyone else would have been paired with Jose, decision day would have been a no. When they had that big blow up where Jose cussed her out and locked her out of the apartment, the fact that Jose holds it against her that she wanted to leave the marriage sounds unreasonable. To me, it's like he's saying, I should be able to cuss you out and treat you like a dog and still have you by my side when I want to apologize. Ugh, I can't trust you. But I can't even fake about caring about this couple. I'm not impressed with their relationship, but I'm happy that they are and decided to stay married. Oddly enough, they may be the only couple that lasts 